Hello, my name is uh, Israel Schneider. Uh, I finish your mayor at Foreign. Uh, asked me to speak and I try to do so. And today I want to talk about uh, Dr. Freud's uh, theory of development that the child uh, should make us from zero to one and a half to 18 months. 18, yes. Uh, is the old stage, he puts everything in his mouth. Then later on he discovers that he excretes from one and a half to... One and a half to three maybe. To three. He discovers the excretes and he likes to play with it. I mean, it's something that's coming out of his body. And Dr. Freud says this has to do with later on in life he wants objects, because the objects also come from his body, right? He sweats, he works. He gets money, he buys objects, so it's like coming from his body. Right? It's like the Cadillac is really somehow, he gives birth to the Cadillac and whatever he owns. So the playing with the Cadillac and with his uh, Picasso painting on the wall, it's all a reminiscence of his original, the first thing he played with his hands, which was his excrement. And then he decides, he finds out at a certain point, after three years old. I don't know exactly he got okay, stuck Okay, at a certain point he finds that if you touch a certain part of your body, it's under your belt. There's two testicles hanging out. If you touch that, you get a certain pleasure. It's pleasurable. It's a pleasurable experience. It's much more pleasurable than touching the essence of your body. You that. It's gushy, but it's much more pleasure. Okay, so he goes through these three stages, oral, animal, genital. And I think what Dr. Ford says is that if he goes through them in a good way, he becomes normal. If he doesn't, he becomes obsessed with food or with objects or with sex. So it teaches us Dr. Ford. Very interesting. Uh, what I want to speak about is that our holy Rebbe, Rebbe Nachman, Rebbe Nachman, Rebbe Nachman, 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 he said these ideas a long time before, right? Like, before, right? Like, passed away in 1810, I don't know exactly. 1810. 1810, I don't know exactly when Shlomo Freud was born. 1856. 1856, okay, 46 later, 46 years later. 46 is the middle year of the shame. Yud Vav Dalet, K Yud Vav Yudlov, K Yud Vav Shem, Ayin Beis, just take the middle year. You would have done it in the 20th, uh, no, 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 etc. Et the middle is worth 46. 46 plus 26 equals 70. Okay. So, Dr. Freud was born 46 years after he passed away. Everything has a meaning. It's not for that. In that case, Rabbi Nachman teaches us in the first discourse, in the second part of his magnum opus, Sefer Kutim Moran. It's called Tiku Mimshala. He says there that um, he's discussing a, a statement in the Babylonian Talmud in the first tractate, uh, tractate uh, Rochais, page uh, 3a. The dear Rabbi Yezid, the famous Rabbi Yezid, Rabbi Yezid, Rabbi Yezid, Rabbi Yezid, Rabbi Yezid, Rabbi the main student of Yochum Zakai, he tells us something about nature. He says, you can split up the night into three parts. And the first part, the donkey prays. Right? If you hear donkey praying, you should know it's the first third of the night. Right? We say the night starts at, say, Sukhachom, and the stars come out at 6 o'clock in Nisa and Tisha. What's the question? Chamor no or? No air. No air. No air. Grays. Kachor Shmuel Shapiro used to call a radio. The Chamor no air. If you hear donkey brain, you know it's from 6 o'clock, right the hour of the night is for the hours. So the first third of the night, um, sometimes the night is only 10 hours, sometimes it's 15 hours, whatever it is. The first third of the night, the first third of the night, choice uh, Mondays, before choice Mondays. So we have four hours, four short Mondays. They have 60 minutes or 40 minutes or 70 minutes. That's the best way. How long that is. 
So if you need a you know that it's the first Thursday the night from 6 o'clock to uh, 10 o'clock, choice man. It's good to know. Sometimes the information comes in handy. You don't have a watch. No, it's rare when you need to speak so, up. The next third, the next third of the night, from 10 to 2, uh, the dogs are barking. The dogs are active. Why is this so? I don't know. Is it actually so? The science agree? Uh, no, you have to ask a, uh, I'm sure, Henry David Thoreau, who was in fact, was very interested in watching nature. I'm sure if he would have heard this uh, statement by the uh, Rabbi Yes, he would have uh, started investigating if this is true. Okay, you have to find out. Maybe you should make a find out. The thing is, the Lord says, Rabbi Yes says, the dogs are barking. If you know, if it was barking, it's not before 10 o'clock at night. I mean, it can happen when you go box, but really box. It's so no it speed things up a little bit. No reason. She may want to speed it up, okay. Cut down the uh, spare. And um, from 2 from two to 6, um, if you hear a woman speaking to her husband, or it could be having sex with her husband, you know, sometimes that's what it means. Sex is a dirty word. Which name? No, please. If you hear something, so you know it's that's the time. That it, it's the best time for it to happen. It's the optimal time for that, according to the uh, So uh, okay, interesting. But maybe last man intends it this way. He says the first mishmora. It's called the mishmerit or mishmora, mishmor. The first section has to do with with uh, oral. Oh, uh, no, sorry. Not, that, he doesn't say the old The first section is the first. Come on, no. This has to do with money. Anna stage. Come on. Uh, and, yeah, uh, come on. Very good. And second, the second, the dogs have to do with food. The oil. So it's a different order. And the um, third is the genital state, sex. And he says it's connected to the three regalim, or three major festivals, Pesach, his uh, donkey, money, Shavu uh, is, is, uh, is uh, sex, um, the women, the man and the woman. Uh, so again, it's in a different order. This is also a different order. Each, the Mishmaris are a certain order. The festivals that they, they correspond, but in a different order. And the uh, third festival, the Tabernacles, uh, Sukkot, is food. But, Professor Schneider, that's me. I say, but if you start from the beginning of the year, as if you say, like on Rosh Hashanah, the baby is born, so it goes in order. Sukkot is food, oral. Pesach is Anna. And Shavuot is, is sex. So from the beginning of the year, we have the baby growing up and experiencing uh, these uh, three stages. Now, Schumann tells me that um, Dr. Ford says that between the development of the, uh, of the uh, animal stage and the development of the genital stages, two other stages, which I really don't know what they're about, called latent and Fabric. But it fits in because we know there are 49 days. We count the We have to do our homework, my kids. So what? I don't know either what it means. I just looked in the. One day we'll find out. Life is about learning. How, how do we fix these things? What? How does somebody who's stuck in the oral stage? He's always I told What does it mean? He's eating, he's talking. I told you how to fix it. You didn't want to listen to me. The what? oral stage. The, or, the way to fix all these things is to disgust yourself. <laughs> You have to get disgusted. If a person is obsessed with food because as a child his mother didn't have enough milk to give him, or whatever it was. Like I always used to say about the kid, Mary, his mother never gave him milk. <laughs> this is an old diagnosis. Okay, we well, should not say no. But uh, that's why I need so much attention from people, you know, etc. Et et his mother's breasts were not here for him. For whatever reason. I'm in Israel. For whatever reason. He denies it. Okay. He's in denial. But. Uh, 
the way to get away from any one of these things is to discuss this. I don't know. What about the Rebbe talks about in the story of the Baltafila? They were into tie with Momo. Maybe you plan to talk okay, about that? Okay, that's true. It's good to go along and forget about that. I think we're going to have to read it. Uh, discusses this idea in his stories, in, uh, in the story of the Baltafila, which is the 12th story, the one for the last. He has uh, 10 different groups, and one group is very much into, into money, and they're like the main problem in the story. There are other problems, but these people are the sickest of the sick. And uh, the Baltfila saves them. The Which I heard from Yitzhak Ginsburg, was he said, when they got rid of the Veda Zora, they had to give something out, so they gave him Taiwan's Mammon instead. So that's the Veda Zora of today, Kokshamatim of Yitzhak Ginsburg. Okay. So they may say saying that uh, it goes back originally to idol worship. Uh, we know that these three sins, uh, murder, idol worship, and idolatry, which correspond to these three uh, uh, stages, as the Chumirov says in his commentary, Okay, we will get into that right now. Uh, to make a correspondence, it's another thing that has to be discussed. We have the correspondence between the three uh, lust, food lust is, 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 has uh, Jacob fought, is, our forefather Jacob is against the food lust, Sukkis, our forefather Isaac is against the sexual lust, and Shruis, and our forefather Abraham is against the money lust, basic. So that we have a parallelism, and there are many other parallelisms, I'm sure. But we can't get into that right now, and I really don't know, I'm too confused to tell you right now, uh, but uh, it has to be investigated. In any case, um, so the Rebbe says that the Baltfilo in his story, the Baltfilo, the master prayer, he takes these people to Jerusalem, to the holy mount, Mount Moriah, and uh, through the Corbin Pesach, which you know Pesach, as the Rebbe says, is the same the only seminar that we just discussed, I think we Pesach is against Titus Mormon, right? Well, let me, let me, let me ask you something. Talk on each one here. The oral phase. What are the symptoms of it? I was talking, I, I ate eating, I ate smoking. The mouth, the the But you have to. The, the, the way to treat yourself is to make it disgusting. To make it disgusting that you, in other words, what's your proof? Obviously, you have to just have a little common sense, which unfortunately Shunei has none. But you just have to have, to have a little common sense. To understand that the child, the grown-up child who's obsessed with food or with money or with sex, the only way we can get him out of it is by showing him how disgusting it is. He doesn't realize when he's stuffing his mouth, if you show him a video of him stuffing his mouth, he'll, he'll be horrified. So we can show him a video. We have to do whatever we can do to make it disgusting in his eyes. Le ma'es et avot. Be'enav, that he should see that these things are disgusting. I think there must be another way. Okay, Shumaya doesn't want to do it because uh, he's such a, even though he himself is a disgusting person. I just but, know. <laughs> but the truth is, in his inner self, he's very delicate. He's a paradox for Shumaya. He walks around with dirty clothes, dirty I just know. He, walks, he looks like a complete slumper, a complete disgusting person. But in his heart of hearts, he's a tremendously delicate person. Much more delicate than I am. I look like I'm delicate, but in, inside I'm not delicate. It's like we're like opposites. But okay. Uh, the point is, Schneider says the easiest way to get out of these things is just to show yourself and convince yourself that these things are totally and absolutely disgusting. Then the person can turn to a white piece of shit. Would you say this is the way the Baltafila did in the story? No. No. Because if we have a Beis HaMikdash, we have a strong force of Kedusha, we have the Korban Pesach. So if you come to Abin Nachman, you come to Uman, which this jerk was not so well. If you come to Uman and you buy the Rebbe, so of course you get the Kedusha. So the Kedusha, of course, chases away as a fire, the Snebo air. Of course, the fire chases away, the fire of the Korban Pesach, the fire of the Kedusha chases away the tumor. But the question is, most people don't, don't have this Kedusha. Most of the population of the world has not been to Uman. I mean, a certain small percentage, thousands of people have been there for Russia. But that's the thing. We're in Messiah, part one now.